Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. Today, well, this is the first of actually five days of travel and filming and going to different places and I thought you guys might want to come with me. So, today we are going uh, all the way down to uh, Lincolnshire. I actually, hang on, nope, I need to put another stop in that because I also need to go to Costco and buy some stuff for my client for tomorrow. So Costco Gateshead. And of course this is the bit where you then, ah, it's actually put it in the right way around. That is good. Okay, so what's it saying to me in terms of stops now? So, okay, that's interesting. I'm actually going to go a different way because it's trying to send me down straight down the A1. And I think I'm going to go A68, Carter Bar, Jedburgh that way because, frankly, it's nicer. So we'll see whether we need the stop in uh, Gateshead or not because that's what it's putting me into, isn't it? It's putting me into a, hang on, edit trip, edit trip. Let's go do that way. So, yeah, it's basically, it's saying that it wants me to stop in... Uh, at the supercharger in Gateshead, obviously Edinburgh on the way down, and as we go, I have charged the car pretty much up to full um, on the Model Y long range battery that I've got, the NCA um, battery. It does say don't charge it up to 100% all the time, but it's absolutely fine for long trips like this. I'd rather burn my power than Tesla's power. So if I can fill it up to 100% on my little wall box over there, I'm gonna do so. Anyway, what we need to do now is to reset the trip because I have got a lot of miles to do over the uh, next five days, by 1100-ish, and we're going to see what this looks like. Can we be more efficient than my long-term average of 291 one hours per mile? And the reason why I'm asking why is because it's five degrees and it's raining. Let's get on with it. We are all of eight miles into this trip, but I thought it was worth just jumping back on to talk a little bit about the weather and the conditions. It is five degrees, um, it's raining, and there's quite a bit of standing water on the roads, as you've probably just seen, um, which does impact on efficiency. Cold, less so than standing water. So this will be a good use of both the car's efficiency, its comfort, and also its space. So about 1100-ish, 10, 50 miles or so on this trip across the whole time. What I wanna do is I want to improve the overall efficiency that I've been getting. And a long trip is a good opportunity to be able to do that. So my overall efficiency at the moment across eight and a half thousand miles is 291 watt hours per mile I want to be able to reduce that overall on this trip so the aim is to do less than 291 on this trip we are 50 miles into the trip now and okay my efficiency drive isn't really driving particularly well I'm on 313 watt hours per mile that is giving me on my 30 mile average uh, projected range until empty of 176 miles which considering that I've got 78% of the battery left is um, how do we say in Lancashire a bit bobbins it is the rain and the water on the road that is absolutely killing this and I've said before on a few of the other trips that I've done where um, it's been driving you know through a monsoon or with Noah in his arc overtaking me that standing water absolutely kills your efficiency and that's absolutely the case in this so um, I suspect this is going to end up being a three stopper today rather than a two I'm almost certainly going to need to do a uh, zap and dash at uh, somewhere like um, Gateshead which no sorry it's Washington isn't it um, so I've got to stop at Costco in Gateshead and then I'm going to uh, stop probably at the supercharger at Washington. To be fair, that'll be a new one. I haven't been to that one uh, previously, but I know it's only a V2, which means a slower overall rate of charge. So probably only 150 kilowatt maximum. 
and um, also the fact that the stalls are tied so you basically are splitting the power between the pairs of stalls now I think the good news there is that because I am going to be arriving on probably about 25% battery I wouldn't get all right, I would get more than 150 kilowatts, but probably not for long. So first of all, of course, we are going to the supercharger at Edinburgh Newbridge, which is my uh, usual haunt. Um, I am going to make use, though, and show you guys that if you've got a supercharger like that, which is at a Tesla service center, while it's open, you get free coffee and biscuits. So this could be interesting. We are about to enter a contraflow. Let's see how autopilot copes with this slalom, shall we? So it's going to be marked, right? There's no way you're going to do uh, 40 or 50 through that. So let's slow it all the way down. 30, 30, 30, 30. No chance at all. <laughs> Take control immediately. Yeah, all it saw... <laughs> was a, a forest of cones in front of it and no clue what to do. Half a mile from Dundee and we've burned more energy than I thought I was going to do. So the plan was to reduce my consumption from 291 where it was and so far 104 miles in we are on 320 so my average has actually gone up by uh, one um, <laughs> to 292 watts per mile yeah it's just been so wet and it really has been properly soggy and that has been the problem so um, Hopefully, it's going to get a little bit easier as we go. I do have to float the question at this point. Is there any chance at all of this bit of the A90 please being bypassed? Because these roundabouts are really tight. And, well, how can I put it? Um, they're a pain in the bum. <laughs> and then the traffic lights at the top where there used to be a double roundabout and then it was taken out. The traffic lights are even worse. This, you know, this is all of the traffic that goes effectively to the northeast of Scotland, to pretty much anywhere else, all has to go through this bit of uh, Dundee. I would very much not like living along the route of this, breathing in everybody else's pollution. Of course, I haven't got any pollution because I'm driving a Tesla. Um, maybe I'll fart out the window or something just to join in. We are off the motorway in Edinburgh. Well, not in Edinburgh, west of Edinburgh. Um, and we are coming up to the supercharger. Let's have a quick look at how we are doing. Um, so I've definitely burned more energy than it would have expected. We've actually burned nearly 17% more power than it would originally have mapped. And that is entirely because of the drag on the wheels because of the rain that's it that is the reason why i have not been hammering it i've been cruising at 65 70 consistently i drive progressively in that i actually look ahead and check where things are at so that is what's caused that and it's not great but it is what it is happily i don't need to particularly worry about it because i'm just driving a tesla and that means i've got access to superchargers quite a few superchargers so if i'm going to burn a little bit more power it really doesn't matter because what i'm actually going to do is just plug the car back in and stick some more power in so i honestly don't really mind that much driving the thing in the winter because there's always somewhere uh, to go and plug the car in i suppose then the next question is um what does this look like for energy use in terms of range so i have done 163 miles since i set off this morning and i've got 27 uh, percent of the battery left and the graph is telling me that i have got oof, 77 90 probably about 90 miles or so of range left so um, that puts me on about 250 miles so okay that is definitely less than it might be yeah but it's not disastrous. And I think that's kind of the point. It's okay. 
Now then, this is the uh, Edinburgh Supercharger. I am going to stick it over on that one. And then we'll get a little bit of work done while we're charging up. Again, it's never dead time. You know, I'm a busy guy with <laughs> various uh, enterprises going on and a job as well. Um, there's always stuff to do. As usual, this is a doddle. Push the button on the top. I'm right-handed, so that's more of a faff than it should be, but anyway, that's now in. And then we're gonna go and have a look on the screen and see what that's gonna tell us. So, this is already ramping up quite nicely, so we're looking at the number up here. So 17, 97, 116, 121. Um, these are V3 superchargers, so they're capable of delivering 250 kilowatts, although I've come in with 27%, so I don't think we'll get that. It has been preheating the battery. So it preconditions the battery, it warms it up to make sure that it will charge as rapidly uh, as possible. 184, are we still going? 184. Okay, so that is frankly quicker than you're going to get from pretty much anybody else. It just is. Also, let us have a look at something else, which is the amount of money that it's costing at the moment to charge up is something faintly ridiculous. So it is, there you go, 45p a kilowatt hour to charge up here. Now that is, let's just say, that's a little bit less than you're gonna pay anywhere else where you're paying 69p a kilowatt hour or 75p 79p a kilowatt hour you know this is the tesla advantage you have this supercharger network which is not only super easy to use and reliable i haven't come here and had to tap a card or use an app or do any of that nonsense you literally roll up plug it in and it starts delivering huge amounts of power and it's cheap just get a tesla Okay, emails and things done. I need the toilet and I can get a free coffee because this, a note that I can just shut the door and walk away and the car will lock itself. But this is the Tesla service and sales center in Edinburgh, which means I can go in and get a coffee and some biscuits. six minutes left five minutes left now what that is going to do it says is give me enough charge to then route me to well where does it want me to go it wants me to go to the Washington supercharger I don't think I'm gonna need that I suspect I'm gonna end up going to Scotch Corner instead just because the Washington one is only four stalls and it's slow and a bit manky so I don't think I'm going to get to that one but either way we are going to have absolutely plenty of power to be able to make at least Scotch Corner because Scotch Corner is 157 miles and my 30 mile average is showing 193 so I'm already well ahead of that I am going to let it top up a little bit more although there is a reality always with these things of the more percentage you've got in your battery the slower it charges and that's just how these things work so there's not much point in sitting here anywhere really beyond that you will find it where you have superchargers where it will restrict you to 80 percent if they're busy or i think i've even seen 70 percent at one point and that really is just because there's no point you sitting here on anything like that just as a note so i've already said that this is a really cheap charge at 45p a kilowatt hour which is fabulous right but it's also the speed of it i'm getting to the point where i'm going to unplug in a minute and i'm still drawing 71 72 kilowatts so that's gone to 75 and that's saying calculating remaining to be able to do that i suspect what it's doing is it's looking at, at how much power we're going to have at the various stop points because it appears to have missed those out 
which is exciting. Um, yeah, enough energy, so let's get on with it. And again, thumb on the button, hold the button, it switches off, stick it back in the holster, and the flap closes. It's magic. And with that, we're good to go. Let's just have a look. What is it telling me now for those points? Okay, good. So yeah, it's telling me I'm gonna have 27% when I get to Washington, which is definitely enough to get to Scotch Corner. Let's plan to do that. We're on the climb to Carter Bar, and it's, um, it's really had an impact the slow running to Jeb, but not so much in terms of journey time, because like I say, it does mean I've actually, uh, I'm able to completely cut out one of the stops that I was uh, planning to do. But just I mean, looking at the graph, you know, you can see the, the there was a huge uh, amount of additional power that had been burned on the run to Edinburgh. That has basically closed itself there. and We were actually ahead for a little while. Um, it's showing us being in deficit again, only because we're on the climb um, here up the hill. Um, once we start dropping down the other side again, I expect that that's going to merge back together, which is fab. I think as well, I do want to make uh, one little point here, which is that um, it is now five past one and I left home at about 10 to eight. So I have been going basically for what, five and a quarter hours and I am finally coming down to the uh, Scottish border. Um, I have done 229 miles. So where people think about, oh, you live in Scotland, great, and Scotland is like just one thing. It, it really isn't. Scotland is, is big. It's really long as well. So um, it actually takes a long, long time just to start thinking about, am I now going to cross the border back into England? And that's a good thing. I love Scotland. I mean, I'll be honest, I love Northern England as well. We're, when we cross the border in a minute and uh, come into Northumbria, Northumbria is also absolutely beautiful, all of it. So it's not all Scotland and, and down on England, far, far from it. But I do enjoy the fact that I can enjoy so much of Scotland on trips like this. So anyway, we are coming up on the border now. Give the wipers uh, a bit of a go. Uh, we'll do it again. Goodness me, we have got water everywhere on this windscreen. So there is actually a um, a beacon up here where you stick straw in it and light it. Um, that's down on the map as the single European market uh, beacon. Uh, obviously, has been put uh, marked as such by a wag. Uh, trying to make the point that Scotland um, didn't vote for Brexit and still favours being in uh, Europe. Anyway, it is still five degrees. Um, there is still quite a bit of water on the road, although it's not as bad as it was. But let's see how the, the run downhill from Carterbar um, actually does for my economy. As I expected, um, as we've dropped off the hill, um, efficiency has changed somewhat. So if you put the 15 mile graph on, you can see climbing, 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 bits more climbing, get to the very top and then absolute plunge down. I love looking at energy use charts like this because it really does show you the places that you're going to. We'll just come off autopilot there to go around the van. Um, and then obviously on 30 mile range, again, you can see it's a hilly, 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 hilly part of the world, which is what has brought us to here. There's obviously been big badaboom on the A1 near the Angel of the North because I have been diverted off. I had a quick glance on maps while I was in the checkout queue in Costco and did see that this was likely, but obviously this just takes even longer than it was going to do before. It is still, uh, yeah, big red. Now, guys, this is why I have um, the premium connectivity because as I understand it, if you don't tether, uh, sorry, if you tether your phone so you make your own Wi-Fi hotspot, you don't get travel. Um, so this is showing me red 
um, showing how bad the road is. That's information I wouldn't have otherwise, and I, I definitely think that it's um, that it's worth having. So it is going to still take me off to the superchargers at Washington. They've got a 150 uh, kilowatt. Uh, top power which is better than the 120 at Scotch Corner um, uh, it's it's not ideal uh, I'd rather have just gone to Scotch Corner but if it's not going to um, if it's not going to be a good idea because it's already queuing then fine and look here's the reality as well yeah 120 top speed and Scotch Corner is queuing let's assume that I get there and a stall becomes available it sounds almost certain or at least very likely that I I would be splitting the charge with somebody else which means the maximum I would get would be 65 so the diversion and it's only a short diversion to the Washington one is definitely worth it because if I can get uh, full power I basically would be charging twice as quick as Scotch Corner here we are okay oh god this is a fun little entrance isn't it <laughs> And that a brick <laughs> there appears to be a brick <laughs> on the way in that's helpful okay superchargers right so have we got any unpaired chargers uh short answer is no one two three four ass i'm gonna have to split somebody's charge and they're not gonna like me so we'll go on this one on the end here there's actually eight superchargers and six of them have got somebody on but every single one of the two pairs because these are v2 superchargers has got a car on them so i am that one there on the end my 150 kilowatt max is being split by that guy and then the same with those two there uh, he is getting full charge he is getting full charge but if i was to move and to plug in next to them i then split their charge as well this is the only problem you've got when you've got old chargers and they're a wee bit busy. Right, I've just moved onto this one because this one isn't split. God, that was a bit of a reach across. I'm in the line, or at least I think I'm in the line. Let's have a look. Yep. They've just been repainted. So that should go a lot quicker than the other one was. Now, it is still ramping up. So let's see how we go. So the other one had peaked at 63, if you remember. Say, there you go, 76, 97, 104. 106. Are we going to get any more? 109? 114. Good. So this is a 150 uh, kilowatt charger. Um, and despite the fact that I've got 44% of the battery, I'm now getting 128 kilowatts. That is bloody good. Let's just get out for a second. And let me just go over again why I've done that. So just to restate the point, all of these chargers are paired. So I was right on the end, and that meant that the 150 was being split between me and the other guy. All of these had somebody else on them, but I just saw somebody else go. So there's no one on this one or this one. And that means you get a quicker charge. So it's worth it, even for the fast of unplug, shift the car and replug, because don't forget, it really doesn't take very long. Press and hold the button, Pull, it unlocks and pulls it out, it shuts the flap by itself and then you get to the next stall, press and hold the button, it opens the flap, shove it in and it starts going. So I, in shifting, have just doubled my charge speed, more than doubled my charge speed, and that is going to significantly reduce my journey time, okay? That move, providing that nobody else comes onto the, the stall next to me, that move can save me 20 minutes. still in County Durham and oh dear me traffic um, it has been bunching like this for a little while 
it's really not helping. So I'm, I'm now showing that um, instead of being there at about, was it quarter two or something, uh, seven, it's now showing 20 past seven and we're coming to a stop again. Ugh. On the A1, just south of Ferry Bridge, and as it was predicting, this is pretty gnarly. However, this is where autopilot absolutely comes into its own because I'm driving along here in heavy traffic, as you can see. The car can see everything that's around me. So you can see here representations of the trucks um, which are there. It is mapping vehicles in front. It's not showing it on the display, but it's mapping vehicles behind. So it is keeping track of all of the things that my eyes, which can only really see in front and a bit of peripheral vision, can't see. And this is where I find autopilot as a safety feature to be absolutely brilliant. The car has got more cameras than I've got eyeballs and it's got a brain which is only content with making sure that we're not crashing into anything and making as efficient a uh, progression through all of this as possible. That is a definite advantage um, which Tesla have and again, I've used various other manufacturers' automation systems. This is by far the best. We are on the A17 heading southeast from Newark. I have got 42 miles left to run and I made up a little bit of time, but nothing dramatic because, well, traffic. I just quickly want to show you this energy use graph. So this is on the five mile average. Can you see where the roundabouts were? <laughs> Slowing down through regen to a roundabout. Accelerating off the roundabout, back to cruise. Slowing down for a roundabout. Accelerating off the roundabout and back to cruise again. It's a heartbeat pattern <laughs> made by the car going around roundabouts. I am, what, six miles now from my destination. And here's the exciting thing. Right at the beginning of this video, I asked the question, could I get my overall average lower than the 291 watt hours per mile that I was doing? Uh, to which the answer is yes, I can. So my average for this trip so far is 289 watt hours per mile. That is lower than my lifetime average of 291. Okay, only by a little bit, but it is lower. So I think I've really benefited from two bursts of slower running, shall we say, of two bursts of the roads not letting me go any quicker. So tomorrow, I am largely going to be on single carriageways, at least for the first bit, as I go off to my um, uh, customer site, and then I uh, drive uh, back to up north to Sheffield. So what I think I'm going to do and stick around obviously because this is part one of a multi-part uh, video on this trip but what i'm going to do tomorrow is i'm going to do single carriageways as much as possible let's avoid the a1 like the plague right let's avoid the a1 let's try the slow road experiment again just how uh, efficient can we get a run if we are avoiding the fast dual carriageways. I think that's worth having a look. So don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when that video drops, and I will see you next time right here on Just Get A Tesla.